Okay. So I'll go over that very briefly. I'll talk about probability distributions and how to use those. So this is, you know, in lieu of using the tables, you can extract values out of MATLAB using the probability distribution functions they have built in. Uh, I'll do a couple of examples with confidence intervals, and then I'll give you an exercise that you can do. Um, I'm turning on the light. Hopefully you can see your keyboard. All right. All right. So these are all the things MATLAB will do. I stole this from the uh, MathWorks website. Not all these capabilities we use, but the ones we will use uh, either today or the next time I do it. I'll tell you today how to do use probability distributions that are built into MATLAB and also do hypothesis testing in MATLAB. And next time I will teach you how to do linear and nonlinear regression models in MATLAB. And then finally, um, on the homework that you have, the fourth homework is going to be a MATLAB homework, and that'll be focused on this design of experiments idea that we'll talk about next week. What is today? Wednesday. Okay, so yeah, next week. All right, so <clears throat> here's um, a few things you can do in MATLAB, just very quickly. Um, you might wonder where this data set came from. It's not hard to figure it out. I just typed random numbers. Um, so I wouldn't try this at home, as they say. I just typed random numbers between 1 and, um, well, 1 and 9, obviously. And so here's the kind of things you can do. So I created a vector called y. I don't know how many values that is. It looks about like 60 values, but I'm not sure. Um, so if you want to calculate the mean, you can just issue this command, mean, parentheses, y, where y is the vector. It will calculate the mean for you. You can do the same thing, calculate the variance. You can calculate the standard deviation. So. This obviously is much more convenient. I don't know if you've actually calculated the variance on any example. It's really a pain, right? You've got to calculate the mean, and then you have to subtract the mean off from each value square and sum them up. So it's not very fun. <clears throat> it's not very interesting either. So you can do these commands um, right in MATLAB. If you want to create a histogram, you can issue a command like this. So this says, please take the data that's in the vector y, create a histogram with nine bins. Everyone knows what a bin in a histogram is. It's one of these things, right? So what, this, what it does is bins up the data. It says it puts all values between 1 and 2 in a bin. and says there's 10 occurrences of that. Between 2 and 3, there's 8 occurrences of that, so on and so forth. Okay? If you don't like the way it does the bin, you can make, you can, um, well, I should say, if you want to store the results, you can store them in something called n, if you want, would like to. You can create your own bins if you don't like the bins that it gives you. So this says, please cr um, create a histogram with bins that are centered about 2, 4, 6, and 8. So right, this will be 1 through 3, this will be 3 through 5, 5 through 7, and 7 through 9. And then you can customize the look how to look at what you want. Okay? Um, now, if you ever have a question, like, how did I know you could do this with um, histograms? Because I have to admit, I don't use histograms that much. I go into MATLAB, let me clear that, and I type help, right? And then it gives me all the options that I can use for this histogram command, okay? So if you don't know how to use a command, and you don't follow why I'm using it a certain way, or you want to use it a different way than I'm using it, then you 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 could go to the help and figure out how to use it a different way or a better way or whatever. Okay. Obviously, this requires you know the name of the command, right? So if you wanted to know how to do a histogram in MATLAB and you didn't know what the command was, this isn't going to be that helpful. So usually, if I don't know what a command is called, I Google MATLAB histogram and then I get a hit that says it's called his. Then I go back in the yeah. Okay. This isn't rocket science, as they say. It's chemical engineering actually much more challenging than rocket science. All right. Rocket science is actually quite passe. All right. So um, really quickly, we talked about this idea of doing permutations and combinations. You can all, all these kind of calculations in MATLAB in different ways. These are just some of the examples of how you can use the commands. There's many other ways you can. So let's say, for example, you wanted to enumerate all possible permutations of 2, 4, and 6. Remember, permutations mean order, order matters. So these are all possible permutations of the numbers 2, 4, and 6. Okay. 
let's say you wanted a random, so you can generate a random um, permutation. So this command says that I want a permutation of numbers between one and six, and I want you to just randomly generate one of them for me. And it comes back with this one, five, one, two, three, four, okay? If you issue this command again, you'll get a different one. Get a different one every time, it's random, okay? So this is how you could like sample a random permutation, for example. You can use this command for combinations. It says, how many, how many, if I have five things and I take them four at a time, how many combinations will there be? So if you issue this command, it'll tell you there's five possible combinations of five things, take them four at a time. Issue this command, it says, please give me all possible combinations of the numbers, right? This means two, four, six, eight, and 10, right? Start at two, end at 10, go in increments of two. So please tell me all, please enumerate all possible combinations of those numbers, which if there's five, right, taken four at a time. Guess what, there's five of them. You already know that, those are the five right there, okay? Obviously, if the number of combinations is, you know, 10,000, it wouldn't be a good idea to enumerate them. Like you said, please take, give me all possible combinations of numbers between two and 2,000 taken four at a time. It would be printing out for like 20 minutes or something. If it does it all, it might give you an error, I don't know, all right? So you can do all these kind of commands, and the way the MATLAB help is organized is that if you do help on one of these commands at the bottom of it, I'll show you. So if you come in here and you say help, it'll tell you, you know, how to use the command different ways. And then you'll also notice it has other things down there that are similar. Like these are, these are commands MATLAB thinks if you're interested in perms, you might be interested in those as well. So if I knew perms, but I didn't know how to do combinations, I would do help perms and I would say, oh, maybe this thing is not combination, so <laughs> let me give it a shot. You know, so there's ways to kind of navigate um, around. All right. So, so far, we've introduced, I think, three, well, we've introduced five distributions, right? The binomial distribution, the Poisson distribution, the normal distribution, the T distribution, the chi-square distribution. And um, MATLAB does that and more. So actually, MATLAB has it built into it whatever number this adds up to, 35 different distributions that you can do next to okay? It includes all the distributions we've talked about, plus much, much more. So 21 continuous distributions for what data analysis. So normal would be primarily interested in the normal distribution, which I'll talk about. Six continuous distributions for statistical analysis, like hypothesis testing, confidence intervals. That includes chi-squared and t-distributions. Eight discrete distributions, including binomial and Poisson, which we talked about. And every single one of these functions, each, every one of these distributions has all these functions associated with it. So for each function, you can calculate the probability density function, the cumulative. Um, function, the inverse cumulative. You remember the, um, so the probability density function is in the notes we call f of x. We just use, we call it the probability function. In other words, you give it a value of x, it gives you back a value of x. Okay? The cumulative distribution is this. Okay? Give it an x, you give it back an f. Inverse cumulative distribution means you specify what you want f to be, it gives you back the x that gives you that, okay? Um, that's not so useful. Um, th then this likelihood, remember we talked about this maximum likelihood, it'll generate the likelihood for you. And also it'll do a random number generation, which I think I'll show you. So if you have, let's say, a normal distribution, you can generate a random sample from a normal distribution. Okay, so for the normal distribution, you have all these different, so this is the terminology. So the first thing is which distribution you're talking about, normal, and the last thing is which particular function you want. So probability, density function, cumulative, inverse, statistics, fit, like, okay. So if you wanted to use binomial, I forget what the first things are, but it's probably B-I-O-N, and then PDF, so on and so forth. So these provide an alternative, as I'm about to show you, for example, to looking up things in the table. So you have the table of what, A7 and A8, I think, 
A7 is the cumulative and A8 is the inverse cumulative for the normal distribution. If you had MATLAB available, you could just calculate things using MATLAB, you would never have to go to the table. Okay. So what I'm going to show you is how to use some of these functions. And I don't think this is the notes, but I might show you how to do the random. Maybe I do have it. I do. OK. So here's a few examples I use. The OK, so what I'm doing here is I'm saying, so, so you have this. How do I know this is how the function works? I looked it up. It says, please provide to me the value x you're interested in, the mean of the right, the mean value mu and the standard deviation sigma, and I'll give you back the probability. Okay. So that's so what I'm saying here is I've got a normal distribution with mean 10 and sigma 2. What's the probability the value I'll get is 8? Well, okay. What's probably I'll get 9? About 18%. That makes sense, right? Because 9 is closer to the mean than is 8, and the maximum probability versus the mean. What's probably I'll get, so in this case, leave the mean alone, but increase the standard deviation. That means the, the curve is broader. So the probability of getting any particular answer is less. So if I want to know what 8 is, the, the standard deviation is 2, it's that. But if the standard deviation is 4, it's, it's only about 9%. The okay. main point is, you for any standard deviation, any mean, you can calculate any probability you want. Okay. You can do the same thing with the cumulative distribution. This says, um, and this is the notation. You have a mu, in this case, of 10, a sigma of, of 2. I want to know what's the probability the random variable be x or less. Right? That's the other distribution that ends up being about 16%. Then you ask, what's the probability if you have the same mean and standard deviation will be 12 or less? It's, it's a lot higher. Right? It's 84%. You can do the inverse cumulative um, distribution. So in this case, what I've done in this command is I've said, OK, there's the mean, there's the standard deviation. And the idea here is I said, I want two values. Right? Please, if I have a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 2, I, and I want to know when. What I'm doing here is I'm specifying this is the value of f, and this is also the value of f. And I want to know what the value of x is. So, and I'm doing it all at one time to get the idea. So I'm saying I have a normal distribution with mean 10, standard deviation 2. I'm specifying two values for f. Okay. That's the first value. That's the second value. And I want to know what is the corresponding values of x's. And it's going to give me two values back. The first one is going to be the x value for that value of f. And the second one's going to be the um, x value for that value of f. So in other words, you can calculate <coughs> as many values as you want for any of these functions. If you use, for example, a vector here instead of a, just a single value, you'll get a vector of answers. Okay. It's just useful if you want to, instead of issuing this command twice, you just issue it one time. Okay. Um, okay, so this, this case says, <coughs> um, okay. It says the following. I, wanted, I want you to sample from the normal distribution. It, the normal, this distribution has mean 10, standard deviation 2. And what this says is just give me five random samples. Okay, Five random samples from there. And so not surprisingly, if you generate five random samples from a normal distribution with a mean of 10, they they're, tend to be centered around 10. Right? Some are relatively far away from 10. That's not likely. right? So what this allows you, so you might have seen, I've done some examples where I, I show you what the effect of sampling is, and I tell you the more samples you get, the better. What I do is I use this function and randomly generate 10 samples. Because I don't do any experiments, you've never seen me in the lab, right? So I'm generating sample, random samples using this function. Okay. And so the idea here, if you were to find, I did this example already, if you wanted to know that the the true mean was 10 and the true standard deviation was 2, you could take five samples and calculate those two. You get a bad estimate. You could go to 50, it'd be better, 100 better. So once you get a very large number of samples, if you take those samples and compute the mean, you'll find it's very close to 10. I already showed you that. 
But this is this is how I generate those samples. Okay. So here's a couple examples that I use there. So I asked this question. We did this analytically, I think, already in class. I'm just showing you how to do it in that lab. So I've got some bioreactor, and I'm interested in the temperature of the reactor. And I find that the on average it's 30 degrees and it's a standard deviation of one degree. How do I know this? I've collected data for a long time and I've calculated the mean and the standard deviation. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say I want the reactor to be between 29.5 and 30.5. I want to ask what percentage of the time is it going to be in this range? Because that's what I want it to be. Okay. So this is a little picture of what I'm looking for. So this is a normal distribution. Right, with a mean of 30 and a standard deviation of 1 looks like that. And I want to know the area here. Well, that's not quite right. Yes, you're sure. All right. These lines should be at 29.5. I don't know what my problem is here. It should be at 29.5 and 30.5, right? That's what I'm interested in. I want to know what area is between 29.5 and 30.5. So to do this, I can use the um, cumulative distribution function. So what I'm asking here is, what is the probability, if I have a normal distribution with a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 1, what's the probability to be 29.5 or below, because that's the cumulative distribution, or 30.5 and below? So I issue this command, and, and this is the probability is 29.5 or below, and that's the probability of 30.5 or below. And if I want to know the probability it's between there, I just subtract those two values. And I get that it's only going to be in the range of I want about 38% of the time. Okay. All right, that's what this is. All right, confidence intervals. Very easy to do in MATLAB. So you can issue this command here. So this is one of the commands I told you. You can calculate the confidence intervals for any distribution you want. Okay. So this is for the normal distribution. And so what you have over here, this is, so the way these functions work in MATLAB is that on the right-hand side is the function that's built into MATLAB. This is the data you have to provide, and this is the results it provides to you as a, as a result of executing the function. So data is a vector of values, right? So if I'm interested in knowing what the confidence intervals on the mean and the standard deviation, I have to give it a, a set of data, right? The data is what I call data here. Okay. Here's an example. I've given it, I can't count, is that 10 values? We already did this example in class. This is for the polymer molecular weight thing. So I've given it in a vector 10 different values here. Okay, that's the data. I've given it alpha. So alpha is a little bit different. So we usually specify the confidence level to be like 95%. And the way MATLAB works is it wants you to provide one minus alpha. So if you want a 95% confidence interval, then alpha is 5% or 0.5 is the way it works. Okay. Then what it's going to provide to you is an estimate of what the mean is, its confidence intervals, and the, it gives you, we calculated the variance, MATLAB gives you the standard deviation, so that's the standard deviation, and that's the confidence interval from the standard deviation. You might think this nomenclature is really weird, mu hat. Remember, hat's something people always use for estimate. So mu means an estimate of what the mean is. Sigma hat means estimate of what the standard deviation is. And those are the confidence intervals. Okay? All right, so let's say you issue this command. There's no magic in what you call this stuff. It, that's magic, right? You've got to call it one thing. So you could call this one Tony, Bob, Fred, and Mel. And it would spit back those things. You could say Ralph is the confidence interval or whatever. But having names that represent what you're computing is always recommended. So let's go with these. You issue this command, and this is this is what it gives you back. Okay. So it tells you that the mean is this value here, and the 95% confidence interval on the mean is these two values. So you're 95% sure that the true mean is between these two values. Yeah. So if you don't, if you don't put that stuff on the right. Yeah. I don't know. But there's no need to guess. It probably just spits it out. Let's just. Well, that's disappointing. It only it only provided the mean. It only provided the first value. 
I don't know why, just the way it is. So I think when MATLAB has, when MATLAB returns a single value, yeah. So why do I want to use it this way? There's two reasons. One is because if you want to store the value and use it later, you should give it a name, right? Because otherwise MATLAB just gives it the name answer, which isn't too convenient. If the, command, if, the, if the function here provides more than one answer, then apparently, I never make this mistake, but apparently it only gives you the first answer that it provides. So in other words, if you don't provide a left-hand side, it's only going to give you the, the first thing over here, whatever that might be. In this case, it's, it's the estimate of the mean. All right, so 95% sure that the mean is between these two intervals, and 95% sure the standard deviation is between these two. If you go back and look at the notes, you'll see this is identical to what we calculate by hand. It, but by hand, we you might remember we calculated the sigma squared, the variance, and the confidence intervals on the variance. But if you just take the square root of the values that we computed, you'll see you get the same answer. It's a lot easier, though, let's be honest, right? All right. So, I've left lots of time. Well, um, not, not, not bad at least. So here's what you need to do. Uh, first of all, you have to go to the website. And on the, if you go to the lecture for today, you'll see that there's a spreadsheet in there. You need that spreadsheet. It's called membranes, I think, dot XLS. So you have to go get that spreadsheet. And while you go get the spreadsheet, I will do the following. Close all these windows. So once you get the, so first of all, you have to go get the spreadsheet, right? You have to save it in the working directory, in other words, the directory where you're currently in, so that you can use it. How do, I, how do you know it's, it's there? Because you, you can look over there and see it. Sorry, you can't see it, I'm pointing. You can, you can look over there, if you're in the right place, you'll see something called membranes.xls. Okay. You can also type in commands like this, I think. Is that listed? That just looks to the M files. How about this one? The what? No, but it's got it's got to be saved wherever you're going to be working. Like I. Oh no wonder I'm in the wrong directory myself. <laughs> Let's try again. So in other words, I I. I prefer to work in this directory because this is where I save all my files for all the courses I teach. It's MATLAB courses. But I can save this spreadsheet anywhere I want and work with it. But the problem is if you save this spreadsheet in some directory other than this and you're going to try to use it, it's not going to find it. So whatever directory you want, doesn't matter. But this has to be the directory where you're working. And I can see it's over there because if I scroll down, of course, I already have it there. It's right there. And if I hit DIR or whatever, I can also see it's right there. Okay. And if you have it, then you can issue this command. So this is the command I taught you how to import an Excel spreadsheet into MATLAB. And you can load it into something called X. Just thinking about it. And then you can see what X looks like. So I'll give you just a minute to try to get the spreadsheet. And then I'll explain what the different columns represent. So first of all, everyone finds it on the website, right? Okay. Then you have to save it. And if you save it properly and you issue the command I just did, you'll get something like I just got. So if you look at this, of course you can't know what this means, but I'm going to tell you. 
So this corresponds to somebody's made porous membranes, okay, for whatever applications, like filtering water or whatever it might be. And so what we've done is a series of experiments. The first row just tells you what experiment it is. It's not that useful. Okay? That's the first column, sorry. Then what we've done is the manufacturer of these membranes claims that they can make membranes with small pores, medium pores, and large pores. So we went in, don't ask me how we did it, like x-ray diffraction or something. We measured the average pore size of 25 different membranes, the ones they claimed were small, medium, and large. And we found the average pore size for each membrane. Okay. So this is actually, what, 25, 75 different experiments. Take one of these small membranes with small pore sizes, measure the average pore size, that's one number. Do it for the next uh, uh, sample that you get. So these are all the average pore sizes for the membranes that are supposed to be small, all the ones that are supposed to be medium, all the ones that are supposed to be large. Okay? In microns or something, let's say. All right? Got that? If you don't got that by now, you're not going to get that. Okay. Um, okay, so if we go back to the problem statement now, so you got this membrane manufacturer, and this is what this is what they claim that they can make three types of membranes: one with small pores, medium pores, and large pores. And this is what they promise you: that the average pore size of the small membranes will be fixed 50 microns with a standard deviation of 2.5. Okay, and the, for the medium membranes, sl slightly larger pore size, slightly larger standard deviation from the large ones, so on and so forth. Okay. So this is, this is the claim that they make, this is the, this is the manufacturer. And you, you want membranes with these properties, let's say, okay? So you'd like to test whether this is true, okay? You want to test whether you believe the mean is actually these numbers, and probably you're concerned that the standard deviation is too great, okay? Because in other words, you want to buy membranes with pore sizes that are pretty precise, the size you want, and not a lot of variability. You don't want something that has an average pore size of 50, but has a lot of really small ones and a lot of really big pore sizes. So you want the average to be the value you want, and you want the variability, let's say, to be low. And this is what they claim. And, and if this is true, you'll buy them, right? But you're smart. You don't, you don't believe the manufacturer, okay? So again, in the spreadsheet, you saw that there's four columns. First column is, is the experiment, number of experiments. The second column is the measurement of the average pore size for these membranes. Second, third column is for these membranes. Fourth column is for those membranes. Okay. And so, um, so the idea here is you want to determine if these things are true up to a 95%, um, I should really say significance level, but anyway. Um, so you want to do a hypothesis test on the mean and the variance for these things to see if, to see if they're actually true. Okay? And I feel like, I feel like I'm a, wait a minute. Okay, that's not what you want to do, which is good because I'm like, I haven't touched, I had to do a hypothesis test. <laughs> that's, that, that's funny. Okay, never mind. Um, so I use the reason I, I, I use I use the reason confidence interval for a reason. Okay, so I'm I'm sorry I got I confused myself. So here's what we're going to do: we're going to take the samples for each of these membranes. We're going to calculate the sample mean and the sample variance, and then confidence intervals on those, and we're going to see if the claimed values fall within the confidence intervals. Okay, that's not a hypothesis test. Okay, but. When I prepared these slides, that was as far as we got. So I wasn't on my process testing yet. So in other words, what we want to do is use that norm fit command I just taught you to calculate for each of these the, the confidence intervals on the mean and the variance for these three different pore sizes and see if you believe up to a 95% confidence limit that, that what he said is actually true. It's not a hypothesis test, it's different, right? So you're saying, does the mean fall within 95% confidence limit? So I guess I should get you started a little bit. So here's what you probably want to do. First of all, you got to get the spreadsheet. Obviously. Then what I did was I saved the spreadsheet in something called X, right? X looks like this. It's it's a matrix, 
It's got four columns. It's got 25 rows. Each column, this column, which experiment you're talking about, small, medium, large, and then 25 of them, okay? And since I want to analyze the small, medium, and large separately, I should probably just create vectors for those by themselves. Okay, and that's what I do over here. Right, so what does this command do? It creates a vector called x1, and it's nothing but the second column of this matrix. Okay. So how do I know that? Because so that, right, when you index a matrix, the first element is which row? If you put a colon like that, that means all elements. Okay, all elements. And this means second column. So this means all elements in the second column. In other words, all the data for the small membranes. This will do the same thing for the medium membranes, and that'll do the same thing for the large membranes. Okay? Then you'll get um, three data sets called X1, X2, and X3. Then you, for lack of a better term, can issue a command that looks like this, right? giving you lots of help. So you'll say, you'll do the same stuff, equals norm fit. You already have the data, you don't want to type it in. So in lieu of putting that vector in there, just put either x1, x2, or x3. Put that number, because that's a 95% confidence interval. Then it will spit out the mean and the confidence interval, the standard deviation and the confidence interval. Then you're to compare those to the claims that the guy made. Not necessarily a guy, but the company. And this is what you'll find when you do this. And I'll let you do it at the end. I'll show you the answers if you have trouble. Is that you'll find almost nothing the person said is true. <laughs> the mean is actually appears to be higher than the claim. The standard deviation is too high for the small membranes. If you go to the medium membranes, again, the mean appears to be higher. What do I mean by it appears to be higher or too high? I mean the, 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 the claimed mean is not within the 95% confidence interval, right? So if somebody tells you, if I do something like this for the small membrane, okay? Now what was the claim? They were 50, okay? What was the claim? Okay. Okay. So let's say I do the small membranes and I calculate there's a 95% confidence interval the means between 47 and 49 and they said it's 50. All I'm saying is, it's not in that interval. It's too high. The, okay. The actual claimed value is 50. It, it's, ah, sorry, it's not in this. Okay. So it's just an exercise in basically finding confidence intervals. Nothing more than that. So you're going to find confidence intervals for three data sets, and then you're going to compare those to see if the values that are specified by the manufacturer are actually within those confidence intervals. Okay. And if you if you do you'll find for the small membranes, neither the mean, claimed mean, nor the standard deviation is in the confidence intervals. They're, they're actually both too high. They're above the confidence interval. For the medium ones, you'll see the mean is again too high. The standard deviation is actually lower, but that's, that's okay. We don't mind that too much. And then for the mean, again, in this case, for the large ones, actually lower. The claim values outside the confidence intervals on the low side, and the standard deviation is actually in the range. So, just an example, just an exercise in doing confidence interval calculation. Okay. So, because you get this idea, I hope um, I'm going to put that one up because that's that's the command you need to use. You're not going to likely remember that. So, again, all you have to do here.